remember this guy, Paul Ryan, the once boyish Speaker of the House? Well, he's popped back into the political spotlight with all the subtlety of a toddler in a toy store. I got death taxes and weird stuff from Donald Trump. That's, these are the three certainties in my life. He knows how to make an entrance into this political circus. He graced Fox News and was speaking with Neil Cavuto to declare yet again that Donald Trump is unfit for office. If you put yourself above the Constitution, as he has done. But what happened? What turned, I don't think, what I think that makes you unfit you for office. Now, this is a bit rich coming from a man who spent years being the GOP's golden boy, only to step away just as the disaster of Trump's presidency was gaining steam. But here's the thing. Ryan's criticism of Trump isn't new. He's been doing this high wire act since he left office back in 2019, trying to maintain relevance without actually, you know, doing anything. It's like he's trying to be Jiminy Cricket of the GOP, only this cricket conveniently forgets he was part of the problem. He's a populist and an authoritarian narcissist. That character is too important to me. And it's a job that requires the kind of character he just doesn't have. So Ryan goes on this tirade lamenting the GOP's direction under Trump. He expressed concern over Trump's unelectability, which is just a fancy way of saying that Trump is a loose cannon who could sink the Republican ship faster than you can say kafefe. Fealty to Trump is what rhino is, right? meaning if you don't pledge fealty to this man, then you are a rhino. It used to mean a liberal Republican versus a conservative. I'm a conservative Republican. Ryan's performance on Fox News was a masterclass in stating the obvious while pretending to be this bold truth teller about Trump's political identity. He's a populist. He's not a conservative. I want to see someone who's who has fidelity to principles. I would prefer a party that is based on principles, not personality or populism. This populism is untethered to principles, and that's why, you know, I'm, I'm an anti-establishment Republican. But, but then there's Troy Nels, a cigar-smoking asshat who seems determined to give Marjorie Taylor Greene a run for her money in the conspiracy theory department. You know him. He was the guy who said the impeachment was about giving Trump, quote, a little bit of ammo. And you can't forget when he looked at George Santos's ethics issues and basically shrugged, suggesting the party should care more about its majority than those pesky things like integrity. Yeah, Troy Nels is a piece of work. But this kind of rhetoric is Nels' bread and butter. He's part of a growing faction of Republicans who've realized that substance and reason it's just overrated. Why engage in thoughtful debate when you could just spin wild stories and hope they go viral? But Nels has his own controversy on his hands. Now there are questions surrounding Nels' military service claims, specifically his beloved combat infantryman badge lapel pin. Now, according to CBS News, his badge from Afghanistan was revoked because he served as a civil affairs officer not as an infantryman or special forces soldier. It's uh, like finding out your favorite action hero was just the guy who fetched coffee on set. What's even more surprising is the number of Republican lawmakers who are now calling Nels out. There are actually some on the GOP accusing Nels of stolen valor for wearing the lapel pin meant for those who actually saw active combat. Congressman Ryan Zinke, who's a retired Navy SEAL, said, it matters. As a former commander, it matters what you wear on your uniform. And if you didn't earn it, you shouldn't wear it. To be fair, Nels is a U.S. Army veteran who proudly proclaimed in campaign ads that he fought terrorists in Iraq and Afghanistan. But again, facts are facts, and MAGA Republicans hate facts. And the fact is, records suggest he did not actually fight in active combat. Wearing that lapel pin is like claiming you were the lead in a Broadway show when you were actually just an understudy. The antics of Ryan and Nels just highlight the identity crisis within the Republican Party. On one hand, you have the old guard, like Ryan, who longed for a return to pre-Trump conservatism, a time when tax cuts for the rich and getting social programs gutted were all the rage. On the other, there are the newcomers like Nels, who have fully embraced the Trumpian model of politics, where facts are optional and every day is an opportunity for a new scandal. Ryan's criticism of Trump 
is less about saving the soul of the GOP and more about positioning himself for a post-Trump future. He's like that ex-girlfriend who keeps reminding everyone she dumped the guy first while conveniently forgetting she stayed with him through most of the relationship. I got death taxes and weird stuff from Donald Trump. That's, these are the three certainties in my life. Meanwhile, Nels is perfectly happy to ride the Trump train until it derails, at which point he'll probably blame the deep state, the media, or possibly even aliens. Both Ryan and Nels have mastered the art of using the media to their advantage. Ryan, with his polished delivery and earnest demeanor makes for compelling TV, especially on networks like Fox News that thrive on political drama. I heard your comments. He, he posted this on Truth Social last month. Rupert Murdoch should fire this pathetic rhino, Paul Ryan, <laughs> from the board of Fox. He said that Ryan is a loser, always has been, always will be. He was the weakest and most incompetent speaker of the House in its history. That Fox something. will sink to the yeah. absolute bottom of the pack if Paul Ryan has anything to do with it. You I, I have no personal animus toward the man. I, don't, I think he got railroaded in this New York case. I don't want to see him go to jail. I don't I don't have any personal animus toward him. Do you, I just don't think he should do you be president. Saying so? His interviews are less about conveying new information and more about maintaining his brand as the reasonable Republican. Look, fealty to Trump is what rhino is, right? meaning if you don't pledge fealty to this man, then you are a rhino. It used to mean a liberal Republican versus a conservative. I'm a conservative Republican. It's a delicate balancing act. Criticize Trump enough to stay relevant, but not so much that you alienate his base. Nels, on the other hand, has embraced the chaos. His outlandish claims and fiery rhetoric are tailor-made for the social media age. Maybe if she wouldn't be so loud all the time, maybe she wouldn't be getting threats. Are you saying she deserves to be threatened? No, what I'm saying is, is that when you're out there talking the way she does, I, I'm surprised that people are probably pretty upset because she's a pretty radical. She's pretty radical. And maybe she should tone it down a little bit. Obviously, Nels understands that in today's political landscape, it's not about being right. It's about being loud. And the more outrageous the claim, the better. And if it trends on X, well, that's just icing on the cake. We had the most beautiful piece of chocolate cake that you've ever seen. As we watch the political theater unfold, it's clear that figures like Paul Ryan and Troy Nels, they're not going anywhere. They represent two sides of the same GOP coin, one trying to cling to the past, the other charging full speed ahead into the future, facts be damned. And whether you find it entertaining or exhausting, there is no denying that Paul Ryan and Troy Nell's comedy show is here to stay. So, you know, grab your popcorn, settle in, because it's going to be a wild ride to November. And if you want to join us on this ride on Really American, please subscribe to the show and donate to our Patreon so we can keep sticking it to Trump and the GOP. I'm Nikki Maduro.